<laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to Magma Rages. Uh, we are finally recording another show again uh, and this is episode 69, I kid you not. Uh, and we've got Bemi here alongside us to, um, to join in for this uh, episode. We're going to get lots of interesting insights from him a little bit later. Um, Bemi is an American, I mean, player, caster, production uh you do everything for like multiple ccgs and other games so welcome it's really great to have you it's an honor and it's always uh, good to be with around friends so thank you for having me uh pleasure pleasure and also team manager what, what, what? anyway i'll get back. uh esports owner esports, esports owner, owner. Oh, okay uh yeah. even fancier title uh yeah we'll get back to that and, and all the uh hats you wear uh, a little bit later but first up uh seeing as how it's been so long since we've rarely had an episode uh we're just going to talk about the the meta in general we're not going to go about uh through like all the uh, patch notes that happened a while ago uh and that we're just going to talk a bit about the meta in general so um pandemonia how are you feeling about this um post-patch meta in Rastakhan's Rumble? So, I'm a bit sort of ambivalent. Like, on the one side, for one of the met, for, for the first time in quite a while, a lot of classes have viable cl uh, decks. The problem, though, is like, we're really finding uh, certain classes are skewed a lot more heavily in terms of playable than others. Like, we're going to discuss now, but like, some classes have barely one playable deck. Whereas, yeah. you know, some classes currently have, at the last check, I think have four competitive decks. Yeah, four. So, I mean, Hunter is the, the, Hunter, the yeah. kind of um, the <laughs> villain that you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, Hunter was sitting at around about 30-odd uh, percent representation at the, in the last, like, um, VS meta report. So, yeah, I mean, that's the, the big uh, boogeyman of the meta right now. But I think, I think it's in a healthier state than it looks on those numbers, personally. Yeah. I definitely think so. Like I say, the fact that up to well, I mean, seven. I would say seven classes right now are are competitive. Sure. You know, as in are, are like viable. I mean, obviously, Rip Druid, and actually, uh, besides Druid, I mean, actually, all of them have a competitive deck. I, I think Druid. Well, Druid has some decks that are seeing play in tournaments as a bit more of a tech choice, but it's not really something that's as competitive on ladder. I think. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and yourself, Bemi, how are you feeling about this uh, meta? Uh, it's pretty fun. Uh, I I think it's kind of funny how we've released like two expansions now, and then like they everybody was playing the same thing, and they were like, "All right, fine, we'll nerf something." Uh, <laughs> and like, I don't know. It's it's not too different. Uh, I I do remember when the nerfs happen, and like very recently, I've been seeing a lot of like mid range hunter as the prominent thing to go to at the moment. Uh, yeah. just in the America ladders, but uh, recently there's been back into the surge that people were just like, oh, hang on, Odd Paladin's still here. And uh, even though without the level up, because Hunter has not really a lot of great options to not go wide on board, it's yeah. still such a great like option choice. So, I mean, at the moment, Paladin's very prominent, uh, and I would also say a lot of the priests that I've been noticing, Mechathun is, like, really coming back at it. I remember when Mechathun was <laughs> released and, like, everybody was so excited to try to figure out some some different stuff, but, like, it actually is a legitimate deck now. It's literally just everybody's everybody who wants to be a freeze mage now. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, it feels a lot like a lot of the um, kind of decks that uh, the, the late game decks have kind of slowed down in a way. Um, so, yeah. you know, we don't have Druid, like, aggressively ramping up to its Maligos combos, and basically that that deck set the kind of speed at which you needed to be able to execute your combo, and that speed has gotten a lot slower. So that's kind of allowed the Mechathune decks to kind of uh, take their place, you know, take a place in the meta um, again, and it's also allowed decks like the kind of Control Priest, which really still hinges yeah. on a combo of, like, the Shadow Reaper Anduin and Mind Blasts. Uh, at the end, and let's um, not forget OTK Paladin. Yeah, like OTK a, Paladin. I mean, yeah, like sure it's OTK, but like in reality, it like requires like three turns of setup, right? Because I yeah, mean, you have to right. go Horseman bounce, Horseman copy, Horseman bounce, and then you know if they don't uh, Mojo Master you, you win. <laughs> yeah, and I mean you also need to 
roll the correct horseman later on, which can, so often it can take longer than four turns. I mean, the other kind of variant on that deck is actually the one that just plays Shavala and the Baleful Bankers with the Holy Wrath. Uh, <laughs> so going for the Holy Wrath, which, no, you laugh, but I think it's actually the more consistent deck. As I crazy agree, as that there's also te- there, because there's also tempo in that deck. A yeah. lot of the times when people just go like with heal Paladin with that as well, and then they just like pretty much just b- buff something to high hell, and then people can't get rid of it because it's just what's that new card that's like a I don't remember it's like it's it's like a four and two four or something like that where basically you play one time and then like it, it keeps his buffs. Oh, uh, the prelates. Oh uh, yeah, the yeah, prelates. and no, um, yeah. I pretty much messed up the stats. By the way, that's that's like basically I one, agree three. with Dib on that. But I also wanted to just trip backtrack to um to Druid as well, just saying that I've noticed this a lot lately as well, is that uh, Taunt Druid is still a thing just due to Undertaker. People just trying to use mm. that with the Hadronox. It's not consistent at all, but there is something where it's just like it has a little more aggro, a little more tempo to it. Yeah. So I think it's I think it's become more viable, but it's in the sense of like it's more viable even <laughs> after a really hard nerf. Yeah, I think if you're looking to build a wall, that's about your best deck for doing that. I mean, a lot of the yeah. other control decks focus on just having tools from the hand, but it's one of the more kind of anti-aggro decks that actually focuses on being present on the board, which is kind of yeah. the, the niche it falls into. I think uh, it suffers a little bit against Priest as a result of that because Psychic Scream is just really good. Not actually killing yeah. taunts and sending them back to the deck is pretty powerful. Um, and so I, th- I think that's one place where it suffers a bit. I th- I've played a l- against more of the um, Mechathun uh druids than uh, the taunt ones to be honest and i mean it does feel like one of the faster ones because it has you know the zero ma- cost spells and like pounce and innovate and you know naturalize and yeah. it, it can cycle through its deck very fast with gadgets and auctioneer which is now kind of the the go-to card for that i really want even shaman to be a thing i just think it is good but like there is not a lot of stuff to like respond with like because he- like hex is just so important now but like I don't know. It's just I want even shaman to be a thing. It is it's good, but the problem is people are just not it playing it. It's so boring, like because it's been a deck. It's it's basically been more or less the same list for I don't know how how many months now. Like, like yeah. the, I, I remember people trying mid range shaman, and then obviously you had um, shadow walk. But like after the basically, I think the only reason it's not being played, and because it's a good deck, it's just no one wants to play it. It's like okay, we bored of it. Yeah, and I think on the topic uh, of Shaman, like, I, I was really interested in the Aggro Shaman variants, and I've still been playing a little bit of Aggro Shaman on ladder, um, <laughs> but it's not exactly something that's taken off as much as I might have hoped. Um, mm. Like, I was really hoping something with the kind of uh, Aggro Tempo kind of overload deck could be a thing. Um, it hasn't really taken play- <coughs> taken hold yet. Uh, the classical Overload Shaman with, like, the Giants and stuff is not something I've seen much. Uh, I haven't even attempted playing it at all in this meta. Usually I'll play it, like, at some point in, in every meta because I've been trying to make that deck work for too long. Uh, <laughs> but we did see this weekend at the HTT Winter Playoffs, um, to kind of skip a little bit ahead, um, Viper bringing a deck that worked very well for him there, which was kind of a, a classical kind of control Shaman that was just kind of running good stuff as well. I mean, ost- ostensibly, I think it was uh, a control Shaman, even though they was calling it, what, um, Peanut Shaman? Yeah, uh, do you but, know what the, why you called it Peanut Shaman? Well, because it's the nuts or something stupid uh, like that. Okay. It was just a stupid, they didn't have a name, and then they gave it the name. There wasn't a good story. He explained uh, it in the, in, the, in the interview afterwards. But anyway... Okay. Um, yeah, I think that deck's kind of interesting. I think there is some space to explore in Shaman that people haven't really been exploring because it's been a bit of a boring class since it was pretty much just even Shaman and Shadowwalk. Uh, and now Shadowwalk's dead, so uh, that's kind of, I think, left the deck in a bit of a, or the class in a bit of a weird place because, as you were saying, uh, Pandemonium, people don't really want to play um, even Shaman because it's a little boring. Even though Bambi seems to disagree. <laughs> well, I I liked I like even Toad Shaman, which yeah. is really fun. Yeah, the, the Toad like, is fun. Toad's really good. Yeah, Toad. But it's like if you want to play in ladder or in, even in competitive play, it's like it's like kind of like it's like the new Quest Murloc Shaman, where it's like it's it, it has it has synergy, but it's absolutely useless. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you really fun. if you really like the the Toad. Uh, then you can't even just play the Peanut Shaman. I mean, that plays the Toad. 
Yeah, uh, but so. there's like there's. And it plays the other like, toad too. Like, it plays the legendary like one. No, I'm talking about the. That's why I'm saying the toad thing. rather than the toads. Toads plural. I would have been referring to reign of toads, whereas the toad is Kragwa. Yep. That's that's the point. There's I'm also saying. there's also Lickum as well. Yeah, more toad themed cards. <laughs> yeah, yeah make frog shaman. I, I I was. That's that's what I've been working on. <laughs> you can do it because you have you have the uh, you have the one mana zero one that gives you a random shaman card. You have also hex. You need the you spirit have... of the frog too. Spirit of the spirit of frogs. Uh, I feel like it's easier to make it a more reptilian themed deck, but there's a lot of frogs. Sure, sure. Slimy, slimy stuff that uh, or amphibian, right? Frogs, <laughs> frogs and merlocks. They're both amphibian, so you can kind of combine yeah. the two themes. So Slime shaman. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, so wait, what, what are you talking about anyway, before we got to Shagavith uh, Shaman? We got to with so we were just talking, I think we just talked uh, a little bit about some of the other classes. I mean, from Rogue's perspective, I think it's been pretty mad. It's kind of settled more and more towards just Odd Rogue being popular. Like, there's obviously been some Miracle Rogue, some Quest Rogue, even still on the fringes. Um, ah, a little bit of Tempo Rogue, and I saw Jackie Chan messing around with... Um, <laughs> Uh, Mali Rogue again, but I don't really have much confidence in any of these other Rogue decks other than just uh, Odd Rogue, and to some extent um, some of the Miracle Rogue decks are, I think still have a, a place in the meta, especially with um, the Rise of Priest. Uh, that could be the one thing that gives Miracle Rogue a bit of a path uh, back into the meta, but even the Miracle Rogue decks are quite weird, some of them playing like one Gadgets and Auctioneer and one Myra's Unstable Element basically. Instead of the old <laughs> classic two gadgets and builds. Um, and yeah, and then uh, Warlock. I mean, we've mostly been looking at um, the Mechathune uh, Warlock. Uh, as Ben mentioned, some more Mechathune stuff. Uh, even Warlock was pretty popular at these um, playoffs. Uh, and I it was think the second best, I think. Really? It was like it was literally right under Togwaggle. <laughs> really? Because I, I heard them say that like how bad even Lock was. It was it was really much a, a coin flip because so many people brought it uh, and like it's it's and then also so many people brought even paladin that it was just such like a it was either going to get hard countered or it was just going to be a really grueling mirror match and that's why it had not a lot mm -hmm. of value but like you know in other situations like earlier in the previous stream hack the even lock was great yeah like I think it, I I think it works better in more of an aggro meta than in like a control meta right now. Yeah, so it's very much more of like a, a meta choice than uh, a meta breaker or a deck that's necessarily strong. I think it's a fairly solid deck that can find its you know place. Yeah, um, there's a lot of way to play around. <laughs> yeah, I mean, cube is still kind of a thing, but I, I think with some of the combo decks getting slower, it benefits it a little bit more. But really, people haven't been experimenting with it much from what I've seen. Cause yeah, because this is still the same. This is a deck that's been around for so long, people are not all that keen to play it, right? Yeah. I'm so depressed that quest uh, discard lock failed. Didn't work out. Yeah, it <laughs> the so I had hard. A, yeah, my <laughs> friend. <laughs> oh man, my friend uh, Wicked Good was trying to work on it. It was doing pretty well, like within the first week, and then like helped him get like to like rank one, I think, or something like that. And then after that, people were like, "This deck is dumb. It's just like so bad." <laughs> it's, yeah. like, it's like It's like other decks. I wanted to work. But what's the weakest card in the deck? Oh, wait. The quest. <laughs> it's yeah. like, oh. <laughs> and then people try to use it with Zoo, with the bats. Like, the bats that, like, summon an entire field of this bat. Oh, uh, I don't oh, yeah. I don't oh, oh. They were trying. There were some people trying, but it's like, uh. No, thanks. <laughs> um, yeah, and then, I mean, getting down to, to Druid, we've kind of spoke a little bit about it already. Uh, Mage, I mean, Bemi, you're uh, our Mage fan here. A uh, fan of Big I'm Spell Mage, Mage, as we were talking about before. Uh, yeah. I mean, where do you, th you feel like Mage is in the meta? Oh, God. Um, I think... <laughs> uh, I think I think Mage is really good at, at the moment from the standpoint of the situation. That's kind of like you can say for any deck. But I think at the moment... I did see a little bit of Big Spell Mage watching the EU playoffs, and I was very glad nobody went for the odd Big Spell Mage because of how inconsistent it is. But the normal one is really good for like going up against Odd Paladin and also Mid-Range Hunter, just due to the fact that like when the board goes wide, 
mage can deal with it. It's got blizzard, it's got meteor, it's got like flame strike, a bunch of other things, and then building up onto that. And then if you resource management right, using the arcane tyrants are just so huge. Uh, mm-hmm. Just like a just a big old zero mana four four just in the way can like it can eat a lot of the secrets or it can eat a lot of damage and stuff like that and also can survive a flames a flanking strike so that's even awesomer as well so there's just a lot of value i think that big spell mage has as far as the any any other mates right now uh I think it's I th- I think it's definitely there's a reason and you guys are smart about thinking it's in sort of the lower of of the food chain right now but I think I think honestly tournament wise Big spell mage is very viable, but sure. I think other than that, you don't want to use it for ladder. Yeah, I mean, I think <laughs> even before Rastakhan's Rumble released, I mean, we were kind of putting mage at the bottom of the the tier mm. of um, decks uh, or classes. So I, don't, I think it's no real. I think it's going to die time. immediately in April as well. Well, and let's think it's going to get worse. Against, right? Oh well, yeah, they're I losing think it's stuff get like uh, Arcanologist and like Meteor, Meteor. Uh, Jaina, I mean, they're gonna have to print some good cards for Mage, so basically, yeah. yeah. the The only thing redeeming it now is that like odd Mage, odd Tempo Mage would be maybe a thing with Ragna Bird, but then even then, that is so questionable. Yeah. Uh, and then Warrior, um, I mean, we're mostly looking at the the rise again of um, the Quest Warrior, kind of overtaking the 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 odd. Uh, mech warrior we've seen the like more dragon or quest um, oriented builds kind of come through and i think that's also once again a response to the kind of uh slowing down of the combo decks you can actually kill people with the sulfur zero power now um and you you kind of want to have a win condition against those slightly slower um combo decks rather than just armoring up the whole game i think especially against like the mechathune decks you actually need to kill them no amount of armor is going to help yes even um Make it make a thin decks and uh, OTK Paladin. Yeah, you know, no amount of armor stops you know the four horsemen from killing you. Unfortunately. Yep. Yeah. So I think the the quest is um, definitely the more popular of the the odd warrior builds. I mean, there's not really What's much else going for warrior, thing? right? But I think, um, uh, yeah. Dragon warrior maybe, but that's about it. Just, I don't know. I I feel like tempo dragon warrior one day rise, but. <laughs> uh, I, I I mean, if you look at the recipe I said you guys earlier before the show, like that's all uh, stuff that won't rotate out in April. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Baku's not uh, rotating, so that helps at Warrior a lot. It does help as well, but like the thing is, is that it does lose lose a lot of the uh, the value of it because what you're using with Baku is just to uh, rack up that armor and have taunts in the way to the point where you just exhaust all the resources. How do you exhaust all the resources when it's like dire horn and a bunch of other things go away? Yeah. Good point. Pretty much relying on Dr. Boom, I suppose. Cause uh, yeah. that will be one of the few classes with the hero. So that's going to help. Yeah. Odd mech warrior may be a thing. Once we see April come around, that could be a potential thing. Yeah. Cause they lose the quest. So they're going to maybe have to go back to that. Yeah. Uh, maybe, de- uh, this, no, Dead Man Hand was Cobalt and Catacombs, because that's going to rotate hey, down. I was like, okay, well, maybe there could be Reload, but no. I'm right. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> well, I like the Dead Man's Hand kind of builds a little bit more than these Odd Warrior tank up builds. But that's <laughs> it's really I, good. I still have PTSD of playing, uh, Freeze Mage against, uh, Control Warrior and then playing Justicar, so that's why I don't like tank up. <laughs> I got that old school PTSD. Oh uh, well, yeah. I really remember people on ladder when, like, they would see your control warrior, and they were just like, they were mage. They would just concede because it was that bad. Oh, uh, I'm that idiot that played out the games because, it, like, I won one in like ten of them maybe, and so I was trying to exploit those <laughs> noobs <laughs> that, that that would mess up in the matchup. Yes, I. I you mean not click the hero power every turn? <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> it, it, something it's, dumb. It's yeah. bad when the matchup is you hope they choke. <laughs> yeah, yes. you hope they're like, you know, they don't click the hero power. is your, your player's an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> okay. Uh, or they just, they allow you to like, uh, draw, give them too much draw. Like that was one of the other things. Anyway, now we're talking about some oh, yeah. 2016 meta stuff. Yeah, so let's move okay. on. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, let's move on to to just talk I a little bit more about our... fun. <laughs> uh, well, talking about freeze majors, uh, control warrior is not fun. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's uh, 
exactly. But uh, mm-hmm. you did come on the show so we could get more insight uh, as to some kind of different um, parts about the, the Hearthstone world uh, and esports in general. Um, so maybe you want to kind of give us a little bit of an introduction, um, you know, uh, like when you started playing Hearthstone, uh, how you got involved in esports and, and why. Uh, and, you know, maybe how long you've been involved in, in card games in general because I know you've played a lot of them. Yeah, uh, so I started competitive card gaming, uh, I want to say about six or seven years ago, and uh, I used to do competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! just uh, because, and it was a social thing to do while you were in high school, and uh, so I did that, and I did also FNM, and I found FNM to be a little more fun for me just because of uh, a lot of the... uh, tactics it is and then i saw hearthstone but i didn't wasn't too big of a fan of like i didn't have enough time to do video gaming stuff so i kind of ignored all of that until i finished high school and then uh you know i started i, I went off tcg because tcg itself got too expensive just like buying physical copies and then like yep. i went in i went i went back into gaming and then i found esports uh my first esport actually was csgo like as a spectator and i thought it was really fun to watch it oh god i may be disconnected uh, no, you're, you're still yeah okay uh, the camera's freezing um, a bit but that's all right yeah sorry yeah, my bad fine. uh na connection lol uh yeah. anyway so uh as as that happened um i learned more about different esports learned the sociology and, and culture of esports and got really into it because i love competitive stuff and then uh i got into like smash brothers because there was a local community here and then one of my friends was playing hearthstone because apparently smash brothers smash brother players love hearthstone which is i huh. think really cool um because it's like you know after playing a very fast-paced game it's nice to enjoy something slow and methodical yeah uh so uh so like one of them showed me hearthstone and i like actually saw it for the first time i was like holy cow this looks like a lot of fun and so i got into it and uh, i immediately fell in love with it and then i tried to learn as much of the esport as i could um and then i just started like i did my first um i did my first like small tournament uh, thing just to see how it is to run events and uh language hacker won that <laughs> nice. uh and uh yeah it was right before he won fall playoffs and i was like okay cool so i'll get into that and i also got into casting as well roughly around the same time doing overwatch and then i met somebody through that that i wanted to do some csgo casting because it was the first esport i saw and then like i did that met some other people and then the guy who was in charge of csgo got hired to be in charge of csgo wesg and he was like i don't know anything about card games and i was like i know some things and then like wesg happened because i would uh, got into csgo casting and then i met you guys and i love <laughs> you guys uh and then uh pretty much that happened and then i was like uh wow i don't notice a lot of grassroots stuff being broadcasted like kyoto esports puts on events all the time never get streamed black Claws, never zotac where is that and yeah. uh so i was like you know what we need we need more events that are broadcasted we need more grassroots events that are shown to the people to show that the tier three and tier two scene are working as hard as they can and this is where their top players are coming from so then it's been yeah. my goal just to like give high quality broadcasts and and opportunities for people to get hearthstone work and casting to like just do that so now i do this uh, i own an esports organization called attack mode uh, which helps uh, collectible card game players and fighting game players. Um, and then also, uh, I also run like production company-ish thing called CCGG, and we produce like events and also broadcast stuff. I have an esports organization, like Esports League happening soon. And then I work for different companies as a contractor for uh, throwing events and also uh, uh helping broadcast them i actually got a new job recently uh that i'm excited to announce but i can't announce yet but like uh i'm coming Uh back for wesg but and then i also have an artifact thing that i'm going to be working on soon as well with uh, a a major esports organization company called uh uh north arena they produce a lot of events and they're from canada and uh like basically they want me to like help them produce an artifact league so i'm very excited about that that sounds and cool. I just, yeah, and I just met them like from being a guest on their Jinx TV show for casting ah. CSGO for Toyota. So yeah, it yeah, all yeah. comes from CSGO and then it sprouted out and then I started Hearthstone as my foundation and stuff like that. So just doing a lot ah, of different okay. things. So, so you combined your like uh, love of esports with your your um, background in card games, basically. 
Uh, yeah, pretty much, and also just event organizing as well. Because before mm. esports, I used to be a competitive break dancer internationally. And oh, really? I used to work. It. Yeah, <laughs> That's I awesome. used to. I used. I used to organize events and tournaments for uh, different countries and stuff like that. And also I represented USA twice as a dancer and then another one as a coach. Nice. Uh, oh, wow. It's like, it's like esports format where it's like it's bracket and tournament mm. and everything. It's like exact same thing as esports, just less supported. Yeah. Uh, but okay. then I get like, it. like I, I've watched yeah. some of the, the break dancing events and like, when uh, I was yeah, a the kid, battles I really and stuff. Break dancing and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I had to do that. Uh, well, it was really fun when I was in high school, and then I had to retire recently. So I just decided to take some of my uh, organizational skills of like managing a thousand people in one room uh, to like esports and like, hopefully. Ma- yeah, make managing a, a thousand people online instead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is hard. Catch but- one way and do it another. Uh, ooh, uh... Room or online? Ooh, oh, God. <laughs> I, I think, uh, I think the, uh, I think. I think online is easier, but it's no. very. I think I think it's I, online is easier because the hygiene of people at lands are terrible. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> so you don't online, have to deal with it. Go ahead. Almost online, is people just disappear from their like computers and like. Yeah, it's okay for somebody to disappear in a computer. It's not okay for somebody to disappear in a venue and like hope there's not a fire hazard. Ah, <laughs> fair enough. If, yeah. if they light their house on fire, that's not me. But if they light the <laughs> venue on fire, I have in bed insurance that I need to pay for them. Fair enough, fair enough. You feel more responsible when they're there in person. <laughs> yeah, you're more of a mom in land than you are online. Fair enough. Uh, fair sure, enough. Yeah. In, I in my I, way, I've had, I feel like... I've had to look off the pandemic yeah, land. Yeah, you have of. to parent them. Parent them is probably a better word. <laughs> Just make sure, like, no, 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 no. That's that, that's beyond the point. Like, don't do that. Like, don't only, touch that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't type when it's online. It's only like, don't type in this Discord channel. Don't don't do any of this, and <laughs> whatever. So, do you do um the like uh, all of this stuff? I mean, you wear so many hats. Uh, are you doing this full time? Uh, have you kind of just been doing it full time since you left school, or what was your like vibe there? Um. Let's see. Uh, well, I graduated high school about two years ago, um, and then I didn't. I, I went to college for sign language interpreting, uh, and then I was in the hospital in June, and then uh, I was like paid medical stuff, and also college. No thanks. And mm. so I dropped college because I didn't want to do that full time anyways. That was just kind of like a stepping stone to get into esports and just support myself. And I was like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to go guns blazing and use this as motivation, my diagnosis. And um, yeah, I just sort of went in and then I just did all my networking and stuff and just remembered all the things I did working in sales while I was working part time and like at, at college. And uh yeah, and I now I just recently like by like starting November with WESG being my first huge gig, that kind of helped me get into working full time. Yeah, and I mean, uh, you kind of mentioned like the the networking side of things there. I think that's actually a really interesting thing, like especially for you that's been involved for everything from tournament organizing to casting to production. You know, herding the cats that are casters at times. Uh, and like, you know, how, how would you kind of give a, like tips to people that want to get into, get involved kind of in whatever, re- um, area it is where they want to be on camera, behind the camera, uh, or just organizing tournaments. Like what are some kind of networking tips? Cause I know personally, I really suck at networking, like especially <laughs> in person. Like when I go to like dev conferences, I'm so terrible at speaking to people. Um, but yeah, I mean, yep. like how do you kind of get, get involved in that like networking side of things? Um, I'm, let's see, uh, the best way to keep this broad as possible, because there's different networking, uh, tools that you have to use for every different d- division of esports that you want to get into. But to be very broad, um, one of the things that I think a lot of people, uh, have a problem with, which gives them in- like anxiety or difficulty to speak at like in person or even online is the, the, the fear of the word. No, you have to be okay with the word. No, uh, whether that means thank you, we'll talk to you later, or we'll keep you in mind, or just straight up no. Those are all three different kinds of no's in yep. the industry. And like one of, like recently, this, I just, the, the new gig that I can't talk about yet, but it's a year long gig. They just told me, we'll keep you in mind. And I was like, okay, cool, thank you. And like, 
they came back and I was in their minds. But like, you know, you have nice. to be okay with just like reaching out to yourself and just like going like, okay, you know, they may say no, what's the worst can happen? That's kind of like the big thing. And then also on top of that, uh, try to relate with them on some human level. Relating with somebody <laughs> in just any way, shape, or form. It seems very obvious, but it's yeah. like being being detail oriented in some way and just noticing is something whether you just happen to glance on their phone while they're checking out something if it's like maybe a sports game even if you know a little bit of it just try to relate or uh, just talk about the event ask them how they feel about the event is going and then just sort of relay some emotions about the events like so like when i was at um uh i was at a fighting game major i was casting and um i kind of just met with like one of the guys that were there that was like trying to organize a big Hearthstone event or just something like that. Um, I just kind of like talked to him. I was like, how do you feel about the, the fighting game major? And they go like, Oh, you know, I feel it's really fun. It's exhilarating to see all these people. And you just go like, yeah, absolutely. I love seeing all the faces of expression. And then you sort of just get in with them with their passion and you just not yes, man it, but you just find the points where you both mutually agree sure. that are general enough for you guys to go like, yeah, this is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, so I think that yeah, relating on a on a human level and also just being not afraid of the word no is probably the top two things to just remember with any kind of stuff that you're trying to reach out for networking wise. Yeah, I mean that that's a really interesting point because I feel like uh, in most of our or my interactions with you and even on like Twitter and stuff, you're always very like uh, positive about everything, I'm very excited. <laughs> Like, yeah, you, well, you I mean, like, and, and I get it now when you're talking about from like finding that thing that you can talk to somebody about that gets them excited and you can be excited about it, too. Like that helps you kind of connect and relate to the person. Yeah, absolutely. Like you, you, Dale and I all love card games, so we can all just get hype about cards. Like, I'm so excited for this event. This new deck looks so cool. Oh, my God. X person got by by X person. I never saw this coming. It's just so cool. Like when we were casting with uh, when we were casting your subscriber tournament uh, oh, yeah, together, yeah. yeah, that one time the draft tournament, we were just like we were just talking about. It. I, whenever I was casting with you, I would just go like, "Hey, does this card seem cool to you?" And just go like, "Yeah, I agree." Or, "Oh, I also see this too in this card." You know, just like that's yeah. also just in our way of like getting around. And you know, now we're friends. We're hanging out. We're good buds. And yeah. Dale's super awesome as well. And I, he's a good friend. <laughs> <laughs> we, we need to hang out more. I, I've hung out with him more than you, unfortunately. But we need to hang out soon. Fair uh, point. I need a stream more yeah, yeah. again. That would help. Yeah, you do. That would be nice. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, but yeah. I, I mean, thanks. So that's like super... I think that's super useful tip and a really interesting insight from like, uh, you know, what you don't really see behind the scenes a lot like a lot of people a lot of casters and stuff will talk about like how to get into casting and stuff but nobody really talks about like how to get into esports like event organization or production and like obviously i think you have very interesting insights and in, you know from having worn so many hats one one other thing i'll just add and this is just i think also part of the top three which is like just like don't view it as a competition people like to view there, there is merit to viewing this as like a competitive business where it's just like one person trying to fight for that gig or the other esports growth is nuts and there's so many games that you can break into that are different it doesn't matter what the scale is and i feel like encouraging people and empowering people more do you more justice than trying to fight for that gig against them and think of it as friendly competition because i feel like we should view this more as a community effort than a friendly competition yeah that's a that's a fair point and i think that's definitely a, like a, a vibe you give off as well that you seem way too helpful and it's suspicious <laughs> because because <laughs> i want to win so I'm, I'm like why why is he so suspicious <laughs> let's win together you know sure everybody's a winner a, a, well yeah I mean, mo most, of the, sense, most of the most of those like, who work hard are a winner most of the games I play with, like, my um, friends that, like, I know from outside esports and that, they are always, like, I generally prefer to play co-op games with them. Because I don't want to play competitive games. I do that enough in, like, esports. And uh, I, d I don't want to get into, like, a winning mentality with them. I just want to, like, win together, as you say. Yeah, so exactly. What you're saying is treat casting and uh, esports as a co-op game. Pretty much. That's a great way of saying it. Cool. Uh, and then finally, like 
uh, I'm gonna ask you the the probably impossible question. If you had to pick like one of the the multiple hats, production, casting, uh, team owning, uh, ownership, um, event organizing, you know, all the different things you mentioned, like what would be the one thing if you if you only had to do one and you could do that, you know, that would like whatever support you comfortably, uh, whatever, like and, and broadcasting, broadcasting. So the production side of things. Like, yeah, the production side of things like where that can be that can be translated uh, to to multiple jobs. It's just about learning what they need to do uh, observing wise. Uh, casting is kind of very difficult uh, to break to be able to cast multiple games because you have to understand yeah. the meta. You have to understand like when you get into like when you jump in right away into casting Hearthstone, there's no way you can be absolutely a master at it. And that's with any other game as well. Uh, even if it's just simply a shooter, like mm-hmm. there is so much complications that go into CS:GO. People think it's easy to jump into shooters. Absolutely not. You have to think about peaking. What is the what is the optimal weapons? What the DPS is that you need to think about? Where are the uh, great ways of peaking? Do you take high ground? Do you take low ground? Do you wait? Do you go in? You know stuff like that. And um, that's just difficult. And also tournament organizing. Some events only last for so long, and their popularity goes up and down. And that's very difficult. And also esports organizations. It's so cool the zero to zero to hero uh, model that we have that allows people to be able to create organizations like that, but they also drop like flies as well. So you have to be careful about that. And like with broadcasting, you're you're a vital thing that you know you. It's not the flashiest thing. It doesn't get you the most attention, but the people rely on you the most because mm-hmm. they are. You're literally the thing that is the glue to the whole stuff because who's you know who's going to be able to cast the game without any kind of observer who's yeah, yeah. going to be able to have an event shown and you know broadcast to the masses without an observer who's going to have that tournament broadcasted so people are interested in competing who's going to have those esports organizations with their players being marketable they're only marketable if the game is broadcasted yeah i i totally get what you're saying i i, I mean i really uh personally like i also find the 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 side of production as in like how do you produce the best content for the viewer is also like something that i really enjoy like having worked a bit with the production teams at like um, esl africa as well and like helping them who came from like a more classical film background uh to like how do you translate things into to the esports and like what things you need to be showing to to give to like yeah. give the full picture to the the player and this like is that, not to discredit any of the other jobs, by the way. Each oh yeah, job yeah. is very important. And, like, I mean, that's something that, like, I always try and do with my casting as well, is to try and make it as an enjoyable experience for, you know, the viewers, even though I might not be the big uh, shouty wow caster uh, so much. I, I tried to do it in my own style. You do a great job, sense, though. Thanks. <laughs> I, I definitely I wasn't fishing for compliments, but thank you. <laughs> Um, okay, so I mean, yeah, thanks a lot. I, th- I think that's uh, super useful information uh, and uh, super uplifting. Uh, and now we can move on to some slightly more depressing and less uplifting news <laughs> and discussion. Uh, and use, I mean, this, use this half glass full attitude as parachute <laughs> for descending into hell. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the glass is very full right now and we're about to drink it until it gets half full and then you're going to have to decide uh, whether it's <laughs> half full or half empty. Uh, and right. the, the, I mean, the, the big controversy here has been about the, the future of Hearthstone Esports. Um, so, mm-hmm. you know, they announced a lot of information. Uh, but we'll get back to exactly what they announced. I mean, the, the biggest thing that came out uh, fairly recently was this survey that they basically seem to have given to random people. Um, uh, I don't. I, I think it was in South Korea, from what I heard, but it seemed to me that a lot of people outside of South Korea were getting it. I know one news outlet reported it as a South Korean survey, but then I saw a lot of people getting it out that were not South Korean. So I, I think yeah, it was it's pretty all much over. everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and the big controversy from that was one of the questions right at the end uh, was, you know, how likely would you be to play uh, Hearthstone if uh, Hearthstone esports stopped? You know, with some multiple choice options from uh, never yeah. to very likely to kind of continue playing it. I mean, that's a that's a big scary thing in the face of the recent um, Heroes of the Storm news with Blizzard dropping Heroes of the Storm as an esports, uh, kind of seemingly out of the blue. Uh, it it was very concerning. Um, for a lot of Hearthstone players, I mean, Blizzard's going through a lot of uh, turmoil. It seems financially and stuff as well. Um, so yeah, and and also um, another thing that kind of contributed to that was 
um che chow che chu chu is his surname uh, anyway uh, che. che yeah uh che leaving who was previously the the head i believe of the hostel yes. sports team he was the leader of the yeah he was yeah so i mean uh we can get to some discussing more his particularly but there's been a lot of this uh kind of shade and uh kind of um, uncertainty around the, the future of the Hearthstone esports. And there's another story we'll get to a little bit. But first of all, um, let's just talk about the survey. So, I mean, what, what, what are your opinions on that survey question? What do you think it means for Hearthstone esports, Bemi? Um, I actually think it means nothing. Uh, I honestly don't. A lot of the, the reactions I've been seeing about the concern and uh, how it's going to affect it is just like, Basically, this is kind of like people believing that the end of the world is coming, even though it's 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 not, to be super honest. And, and this is one of the most blunt things I will say, because a lot of the reactions I'm seeing are from Americans. And uh, <laughs> not, not to not to well, to be very honest and not to generalize, but uh, a lot of a lot of Americans will jump very much quickly to conclusions just based off of things that have people are a lot of the people saying like oh it you know it's the same questions that they asked hot six months ago and then it shut down okay if you're comparing hots to hearthstone you're an absolute nutter because the player numbers were absolutely different one yeah. is in the millions the other has a hundred million players by the way if you want to look back at it the viewership was about 40 to fifty thousand viewers on the hct eu winter playoffs that means that it wasn't even the playoff winter itself that was just one of the divisions which yeah. is huge uh, which is great and also and th you know some of them weren't even big names like i've never heard of thunder up until they qualified yeah um just some random guy out of turkey good on him congratulations and still people were very excited about that um uh, what is another thing that is like a good example? It's like I I spoke with I spoke about this with uh, Den, who's the coach of Gamers Origin. He's from France, and I also spoke about this with other people as well uh, from different e major EU organizations. I spoke with I spoke about this with a few different other people, and I also spoke about this with uh, Lobrinda. And uh, this is this is more there's less concern because realistically. We don't have full information. We're kind of assuming at grasping at straws here. We can't yeah. really go off of anything. And also, this, this, this survey is just a survey at the moment. It's not really detailing anything. We don't have much to go off of. And all we know is right now is that there's a huge successful player number base. That hard, it's a microtransaction game. That's that's. It's going to be very successful. And already, you know, there's also ways of playing it for free. That's absolutely fun. I yeah. love going in the rooms. I love doing the puzzles. I love going into arena with the quest of the complete stuff. It's all very fun for me. I actually genuinely find I, it fun. Personally, I I haven't even touched this expansion single player content, which I think says a lot about the single player content for me. But I, I think you touched on a really important point, uh, and that's the the microtransactions and the viewership. I think that as long as they believe Hearthstone esports is still driving up revenue. Uh, I don't think that um, a company like Blizzard and Activision are going to do anything to to stop it or slow it down because I think for them it's it's just it's still in, uh, making them more money, like uh, which is something that might not necessarily be as true for something like Heroes of the Storm. You know, compared to the outlay, I think that it's still kind of profitable them uh, for them, especially compared to other esports that get massive outlays and might not be as profitable. <coughs> Overwatch. Um, uh and so I, th I think even though Bl blizzard right now seem to be in a bit of a I tricky no position on that, by the way. i know <laughs> uh even though blizzard seem to be in a bit of tricky position financially i think that hearthstone is probably one of their shining lights in terms terms of financial performance and that's the one thing that kind of gives me hope there is just pure capitalism from them i think it's i don't they actually think they're having too much of a financial trouble as what they what what people think they are i think they're actually okay uh, and I think this is more to do with the fact that they realized that esports doesn't doesn't need to be used to sell the game, and that's what they are starting to realize in 2019. So I think there's going to be budget cuts in the sense that they're not cutting the money and not letting it go anywhere. They're taking that money and investing it into other things, realizing that competitive gaming can take you far, but it can only take you so far, and it's not the only way of marketing. So I think 
what we're seeing is, is that Blizzard used all their market, a lot of their, mar- like 95% of their marketing skills back in 2018 just to like push esports to its limit. And now we're also seeing that like they're taking it and marketing it towards like, there's this whole thing going right now in Overwatch where uh, they've been promoting drops more with uh, Overwatch streamers rather than the contenders itself. And they realize that because they can get more about the players themselves rather than just competitive esports, though they do still support it. And also on top of that, Janu- a lot of people panic in January because January is tends to be the off season of esports mm. pretty much and close to February. I think once February comes around, we're going to start seeing a lot more support into esports. This is just a scary month for a lot of people. Yeah, I'd hope so. Um, I, I think the the other... I think. I- on the like Blizzard's financial position, I think the the scarier thing there hasn't been like the Heroes of the Storm issue or anything specific to esports. It's just been that they've been aggressively offering retrenchment packages essentially to Blizzard employees, which in any dev house looks very scary because almost any dev house is aggressively not wanting to lose devs um, because of how like uh, high a kind of um, how difficult it is to get devs, even more so possibly in the games industry. Um, although mm-hmm. there's probably more devs wanting to work in game, uh, in game design. So yeah, I don't know. That's the the one um, slightly scary thing. But we haven't really heard much from Panamonia. How, how have yeah, you sorry, felt yeah. about this um, uh, Hearthstone yeah. esports <laughs> survey question? So like, I always try to approach these things sort of like try to see it from both sides. So like, I see it on from Bemi's side. I'm like, okay, cool. You know, I like to believe that. Uh, you know, Hearthstone esports is still going to continue, but there are a few like so, like we. I don't know if people have, but these surveys. I don't know. First of all, how often they've been circulated, but also mm-hmm. like how often has this question been asked, right? Because it comes down to if it's been asked every single time the survey's been done, and this survey's let's been done has has let's say been done every month for the past three years, then it means nothing. Whereas the problem is if it only started popping up now and some people from Here's a Storm, they said that they made claims that they only started see they saw the question mm. for the first time about six months before Here's a Storm got canned. So obviously now, you know, like you say, we're clutching at straws, but like it's sort of a bad I can understand story. why people are though. Especially with yeah. the fact that like Blizzard hasn't been fully transparent lately. So I agree with you on that. And the fact is, I mean, also, I mean we're gonna get to it I think just now, but they announced, they said end of last year, we're going to announce, uh, you know, 2019 esports uh, plans and formats. And, well, you know what? We're in 2019. We're halfway through January. And we haven't really heard anything about, uh, you know, their, their plans. The, the format is meant to be changing. I mean, that's not exactly a small thing, right? I mean, the format changing from Conquest is one of the biggest shakeups to competitive Hearthstone, I think, since Hearthstone has come out, I would say. I would say. Yeah, and I mean, I think yeah. uh, it's actually a good time. I mean, we're going to leave it for a bit later, but let's uh, talk about that. I mean, the 2019 um, season, they, they kind of announced that they are scrapping the HCT system as it is, which I think was a bit of a surprise um, to a lot of people. Uh, scrapping the idea of HCT points, and they're going to go with uh, this, you know, a uh, tiered system where they have the uh, online qualifiers, live tournaments, and premier competitions. We still need to find out a lot more information about that, like how many online qualifiers are going to run, uh, how the live tournaments going to run. You know, there's uh, just so much. Like, are the live tournaments going to be uh, events like DreamHack that we had before, or are they going to be specifically events you have to qualify for? Uh, I don't know. There's so much. I, th- I feel like that's. Um, still unknown about this and i mean as well as scrapping the master system after just introducing it and i don't know i feel like the master system was a really i I feel like it was successful i mean when it was announced last year we kind of a lot most people weren't expecting anyone to even reach 200 points but we had multiple people reach three star masters i mean hunter ace and just Mm -hmm. saying uh being the obviously the standouts and i think it really helped shape the hearthstone esports narrative for the year you know we were talking about like even early in the season, we we're talking about like, wow, Hunter Ace is on target to reach this. Like, you know, early in the year, you could sell how great a run he was having. Uh, and you could talk about when players reach those milestones during the year, during a lot of the different um, uh, Hearthstone, like esports or Hearthstone tournaments on the HCT tour. And whilst I think that they might have been right and that there was a bit of an oversaturation of those events, 
Um, I mean, even for myself as like a fairly avid spectator, um, I think that having the, the master system really helped with the, the narrative there. And so I was a little bit sad to see it scrapped. Um, I don't know how you guys feel about that. I mean, it was almost um, a year on, uh, I think, to the day that it was uh, scrapped. I mean, it was announced in 2017 on the, the 12th of uh, December at that time. And it was uh, the, the announcement to scrap it was, what, on the 29th of November 2018. Yeah, so <laughs> just under just under a year. Yeah, I mean, like, so the problem is, right? It's we don't know. Like, obviously, they release a statement saying they've changed it to try and you know better experiment the experience. But like, the problem now is because all these things that we've been chatting about have happened at more or less a similar time. You know, now a lot of people sort of panic. Like the 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 mindset is like, are these things related? You know. Uh, is is the 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 question in the survey about the end of house and esports and Blizzard cutting you know uh, trying to promote people to be retrenched? Are these things all you know related in terms of the future of Hearthstone esports, right? Yeah. And that's kind of I think what's panicking a lot of people. It's like I think individually, if each of these things had happened by itself, I think people have gone, okay, cool, no, the, it's the it's the thing of. Whether it's coincidentally or whether they are somehow related, we don't know. But it's the fact that these things are all happening sort of at a similar time that I think people have gone a lot are very panicky in a sense. Yeah, I it's mean, it's understandable. I think this was around the time that you would expect them to make announcements about the next year, uh, especially yep. if they were going to have some big shakeups like this. Uh, and because there was a couple events that were running still, uh, I think HCT Philadelphia or Toronto or sorry, something in the, in Philly, the, in, in, was it Philly? Okay. Uh, and there was another one in HCT winter. I think it was in, um, uh, at DreamHack. Uh, and for both of those, I think it was relevant for players to know, you know, what the point situation was going to be for masters. And obviously they had to kind of announce something to, to deal with that, but they left us with like, yeah, didn't know, Finomino just... get screwed over or something because they were planning to go, but they didn't go because they yeah. thought they already qualified for Masters? Uh, yeah, yeah. Or he thought that they would that, that they wouldn't count for points, I believe. That was the situation. So he didn't yeah. think that it was But then, like, going. the day of, they announced they did. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. So, I don't know. It's it's quite um, tricky. It seems they are going to use the, the point system to kind of uh, decide where players are slotting in in the new structure. Um so and basically how many invites they're going to get to these live global tournaments uh, and i i assume they're going to use them to a certain extent to to determine the premier competition um i think the biggest thing that worried me about the whole premier competition thing was that they said something along the lines of like your favorite players um so they said uh Featuring, yeah, uh, it so, yeah. Isn't it? well, yeah, they, they said that it was featuring the best and most compelling Hearthstone players in the world. So the worrying thing for me there was the separation between best and most. Like, yes, it might just be the way they structured their language there, or it could be intentional to say like, you know, uh, maybe Tice gets invited because he's a big streamer, but not necessarily uh, at his, nowhere near his peak in terms of like competitive, um, like hostile so, anymore so, so that's kind of the the so one big worry story. yeah kind of i mean i love seed story but i love it for a totally different reason for its um informal vibe which is not what these events are going to be like so it's almost a return to like 27 mm, 20, 2016 yeah. hearthstone esports structure where there's lots of like invite tournaments and stuff like that uh you know where we saw like forsen playing at lots of tournaments and that kind of thing <laughs> i don't even know if that was 2015 or 2016 uh, it's going back quite a bit. So, I mean, that, that's the one thing that slightly worried me um, about the way they, they structured it. But once again, it's an ambiguous statement. So, it's you know, and, and Blizzard haven't cleared anything up. I mean, that's the other scary thing. You know, they announced this. They didn't clear anything up. And then they the, the survey came out uh, early this year. Um, so, I mean, this is kind of where we would be expecting them to actually be announcing more information. If we look at the timeline for the 20 HC, 2018 HCT system, um, they announced the, the Challenger Cups uh, on the 1st of, sorry, on the, the 5th of January uh, 2018. 
Um, so that was kind of right at the beginning of the year. They they announced all the rules for the well for the Challenger Cups, and they announced the um, the windows in which case in in uh, which the qualifying would happen and all of that. And then they released the full rule book for the year's uh, HCT events um, and the dates for the first season's uh, events um, on the. Uh, 10th of January and we're already at the 14th of January we don't know uh, the system I mean Panamonia touched a little bit on scrapping conquest and uh, we don't even know what the the, the, the system is going to be you know it could be last year of standing most ridiculously if they left it that open and then just changed it to last year of standing or more likely it's going to be a totally new format and um, players are going to need time to adjust to that as well uh, and you know, tournament organizers are going to need time to figure that out. Like with a new system, you you have to throw away a lot of the stuff you learned. Like, do websites need to build a new thing for pick banning? Like, that's the mo- one of the most obvious uh, questions. And I mean, or d- if it is this whole one deck format people are talking about with sideboards, like there's a lot of admin that needs to go in from a tournament organizer perspective. Oh, I'm sure yeah. you can attest to that. Like that that needs to be people need time to set up. They need time to set up the right tools. Um, or so. you know what another idea is Hearthstone might then have to actually release a, an update some sort of <laughs> update in order of making a sideboard like making you like in game you know, client like, updates ha huh. yeah like no 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 because no, realistically that would be the easiest way to do a single deck format with yes. a sideboard right is because currently if you've seen the, some of the tournaments where they've had sideboards it's literally guys have to open essentially a Another deck, create a deck of 10 cards, screenshot and send it. Yeah. Like, that is the most ridiculous. And then I'm assuming, like, in, in between games, they then have to, like, check their other deck, their, their sideboard, and then, like, modify their main deck. Now, yeah. like, for me, that feels horrifically clunky. And if Blizzard wants to make this, let's want to make a single deck format with uh, a sideboard their main competitive format. And I think they said somewhere it's, it will take over basically all competitive events or use this format. Then surely they should include some sort of way to make it easier to do it, you know, where you can lock. I mean, okay, but this is obviously the whole tournament mode. I mean, you say but surely, but they haven't they have done it up until say. this point, And it's been almost five years of the game right now. So I would not put it past them to not do anything. But can you imagine the chaos in a 256 man open online event where you have to do sideboards. Yeah. Like you can- Artifact. No, no, but okay, but Artifact has an inbuilt in, in a uh, built-in tournament mode where like a lot of that stuff exists. Not necessarily the sideboard thing, but it has a lot of the other stuff, right? Whereas Well, with drafting you can. Yeah, yeah, okay. Dr- drafting is, is different, but um in Hearthstone, you can't do that. And, like, a lot of our rules that we use, you know, we're like, you can't exit the challenge screen in between games to avoid people changing their decks yeah. illegally. You can't okay, do that. So cl- like, you okay, have to so rewrite cl- all the rules for these tournaments. And that's just ridiculous. And I'm just saying, like, uh, like what I'm saying is the whole process of doing these things is so clunky. Yeah. Like, now I, we play game two. I have to cancel the challenge, go to my deck collection... <laughs> I mean, like, just realistically... Think Rounds of, are going to take I mean, so it's, long. It's, I mean, it sounds silly, but think about how many extra clicks I now have to essentially do, right? Yeah. Like yeah. I, have to, <laughs> I have to click cancel my challenge, then I have to click my collection, then I have to go to my deck, and then probably just, you know, it's been a long day, so I have to check my sideboard first. Then I have to... Then after the game, I have to reset my... I, 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 then I wonder, do you copy another... You know, You'll do you copy have a the original deck code. That's default deck? Yeah, something like that. Um, I'm saying, like, a lot of that is just horrifically convolute. Yeah. And, and convolute. The, the other thing that's been, like, talked about is some, like, pick-ban format, like we saw at WSOE, um, where, they, where they had, like, all nine classes and a pick-ban thing. But then, once again, websites need to be able to do the pick-ban thing. I mean, how long did it take for websites to be able to cater for just normal conquest uh, or norm- normal <laughs> just four-pick, one-ban? Like... I mean, we've only re- in recent times seen Battlefy be able to cater for that and like open deck lists, right? Because for a lot of these websites that we use as tools to run, Hearthstone is not the only thing they're built for. Like yeah. Battlefy and this, they built for like tons of esports. It's not just a Hearthstone. It, it, tons of tournament structures, not even just esports strictly. So like, 
you're now asking all these people to do something. So Blizzard needs to provide some tools if they're gonna do something that they that yeah. you can't handle in game. That's that's one of the big concerns for me. Which is maybe the other reason we're seeing the information so delayed and coming out because they're hopefully working on these tools, <laughs> hopefully in game. <laughs> Otherwise, they're gonna come yeah. out and be like, eh, "Actually, we couldn't do what we wanted to do here. Have Lost Hero standing because we said you're not gonna knock on wood for you." Yeah, so I don't know. I, the problem with the WESOE format, just to touch on, you, you brought it up. It's one of those formats that I think it's gr it's a great format, but the problem is it's just from an admin and even from a player point of view, it's just so resource and time. First of all, time intensive in terms of now you're drafting, but also purely from an accessibility. Yeah. Now, like, like that's kind of one of the major advantages of a one deck format is now you know if you want to become a competitive player you, you only need let's say one competitive deck right whereas you know up to now you've needed let's say four i mean i imagine now for wsoe i mean you you will have honestly there's probably some players out there who've been playing the game for a while and who consider themselves competitive they can't build themselves non like a competitive deck in every class yeah that that is a very good point i mean they talked about one of the points they talked about in their 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 um blog post about hearthstone esports next big turn was trying to make it um, more accessible and more similar to ladder and uh, the wsoe format is far away from both of those things <laughs> so I mean, I, like i, I uh, personally don't see it going in that format even though i really enjoyed that format bar them messing up the pick ban uh stuff in the end but basically they should have made it not blind but anyway uh i don't want to go too much into that <laughs> But yeah, I mean, honestly, like, I think everyone's kind of expecting the single deck format with, but yeah, I hope that the, the delay is because they're, you know, busy working on, you know, updates to the client to make this all, you know, part, like, you know, we can now do all of this in game. But, you know, like you said, uh, yeah. don't hold your breath. <laughs> I mean, the one thing I am looking forward to is a cup system. Personally, I think one of the biggest challenges for me uh, with HCT has always been ladder. Like, I hate playing ladder and I hate grinding it. And I'm not very good at grinding it because I hate it. Uh, so, <laughs> like, that's, I don't know, that's always been a big thing that I've disliked. I, I really enjoyed the HCT cup system, even though it was as much of a grind, if not more, um, back in, like, uh 2017 when that ran so i'm looking forward to cups coming back uh hopefully you can try and qualify through those um hopefully they'll make it more accessible for people on the african continent as well we don't have to fly to amsterdam or something just to play in the playoffs like we would have to now um so but, yeah but there was a, is there ever the fact uh, like such like you say the fact that there's no more points from ladder means now the problem now i, I don't i mean now the thing is i don't know is it, is it would you say it's a good or bad thing the fact that finishing high ladder now means nothing in terms of the competitive scene. Like, besides being able to go on Twitter and say, cool, you know, look, I reached ranked one or I reached top 10 legend on EU. Now, like, up to now, you would get a quite a lot of HCT points and allow you to qualify for the different yeah. seasonal qualifiers. But now with the new system where you're getting no points whatsoever, what is the motivation, you know, besides, let's say, your own... Pride. Where you, you, your, your own pride or ego is it good or bad that you know Ladin means nothing you know well a lot less now i i don't know i feel like we already see the impact in that ladder is so far removed from the tournament meta now because people don't have to use their innovative decks they come up with they can just save them because ladder points mean nothing you know you don't have to try you don't have to like it, even if you use a deck a lot on ladder somebody else is going to find out about that deck to a certain extent or, or get the idea even from you um and so i feel like a lot of top tier players are just sticking to practice groups rather than ladder as a result and that kind of removes some of that top tier off the ladder that uh otherwise you know uh, aspiring players might learn from so i i think it's worse overall but I, at the same time i also hate ladder earning you points so i don't know <laughs> and you bimmy uh i like it uh as as just a way of just like earning i feel i feel like what needs to happen is that instead 
Uh, I, instead of like lo- worrying about ladder like not being part of like the competitive stuff, I'm perfectly happy with it not being part of the competitive stuff. I think it was absolutely like not a great idea, yeah. uh, or it wasn't as played as effectively. What I think what they need to do to balance it out to make it more valuable is to set more milestones with more in-game rewards. And I think sure. that would I think so that what, would balance. So what it you're out. saying is instead of competitive motivation more personal motivation whether you make it easier to earn collect yeah so like a more collector's thing of you unlock whether you get packs or whether you get a card back or a hero skin like in the same sense of arena sure perhaps okay I, i feel like at least to push people to push for like top tier like let's say top 200 legend you, you're gonna need to incentivize people a little bit more than that that like, what i would like to see from blizzard is like incentivizing people with swag or I, in either real life swag or even in-game swag if it's like special card backs for finishing top 200 in a season or uh, uh dare i say it um the thing pandemonia wants more than anything alternate art cards that i don't think they'll <laughs> ever make for hearthstone but uh something like that what you know that? something cosmetic so, so alternate arts oh. like uh, is just a different full on uh, animation. No, no, it's just a different picture for the same card. Oh, okay. But like, you so like, like, one, like imagine Hex edition. instead of having a frog, uh, it turned it into a sheep. But it was or uh, no, sheep's we already get the major one. It turned it into um, I don't know a cow for um, polymorph, for example, right? Which is actually <laughs> I, I don't know. I can't remember the other ones in 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 World of Warcraft. Majors. Um, do get stuff that changes what they polymorph the thing into. So whatever, as long as it's like a one one like beast that. or something silly that like that. Uh, basically, the uh, card but... stays the same. They just yeah. change the artwork, so it will be okay. a different. Uh, it might even be the same. Like it might even be the same like concept. So like might still be a frog, but now it's a different frog. So instead of being that like that that like, oh. that, 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 like gimmicky frog, it might be like a, a dark serious frog now. Like, Ooh, uh, okay. Yeah. And then the like like point this. is you make one of them limited edition with the one <laughs> in the standard. That's so one, right? cool. Yeah, so I mean, that's something that, that Magic the Gathering um, has done for a It's all cosmetic, what, basically. Yeah. What they could do is that, you know, you know the go for Hearthstone things that they've been doing lately. Why not just have two different types of competitive plays? One is the actual tournament stuff we're talking about. The other could be people that are laddering. There is sort of like speed running competitions in the esports that's like sure you know that are aside from awesome games done quickly and then also uh there's like other people that like at blizzcon there is uh like, like wow Ration. dungeon runs yeah like wow dungeon runs that are like races as well why not have something like that for ladder and it's I've like done that a few times well, well yeah but i mean like blizzard have never done it external parties have done it yeah, being yeah, so, esports yeah. arena the rat and the rat race um, uh, I, I yeah. think it's a little battle different. riff. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think what like I was also thinking something similar to that is what they did with um, Hearthstone uh, Arena, like leaderboards. And whilst I think that worked for a little bit, basically at this point it seems that the arena community doesn't really care. Like maybe some players within it do, but a lot of the top tier arena players are like, I don't care. I've done it. I've finished first on the leaderboard before. I'm not gonna try every month. I want to mess around and and test out weird stuff instead. So I feel like it doesn't get me anything. Exactly, exactly. You Uh, need uh, incentives. Cool, I can say that. But I mean, okay. So like, it doesn't give me any cards. It doesn't give me packs. It doesn't give me like there's like no reason. Yeah. I mean, like I think you're maybe, but Blizzard have always been like unwilling. I mean, even if you see it the way they've done single uh, solo content, they don't like giving incentives behind like that you because they they feel like you're obliged to play the stuff if you don't want to. Like, if you've seen with, like, the solo player, they, they've they given all the packs up front, and then they say, okay, cool, if you win all of this, you get a card back, I, which is, like, pretty inconsequential. I think it's also irrelevant to give packs for players that are reaching top 200 legend. I think sure. that's completely I mean, irrelevant. Legends, maybe. I don't know. Like, it has to what be cosmetic think? value. It cannot be, oh, here's some more cards, because... A lot of the players read that are, can reach those levels already have the cards. Or now, yeah, if I have sure. most of the cards, I have no or incentive IGC. to do it. Yeah, or IGC. Yeah, it could go. be just yeah, yeah, because just more arena passes for free is fun. I I, I think I wouldn't I wouldn't care 
I wouldn't do it ever for an arena pass. Like I I'm mean, thinking maybe that, uh, the, things, the things that it would need to be for me is is really like in-game swag, uh, like you know things you can only get through that, uh, or like actual real life swag kind of stuff. Like yeah, I don't know. But some, I, maybe some point system where you like you know some sort of loyalty currency and yeah, then you exactly. can be, you know like a hat would be like tw- like. 50- Twenty-five dollars, but like twenty-five thousand gold, or points. Yeah, I wouldn't like, do gold. So I would say it, well, currency, it, it would yeah, be like having currency. HCT points. Oh, but I see. What battle store, like battle about. store points. If you come okay. first on Legend, you get a hundred battle store points, and then yeah, you can exactly. redeem twenty-five hundred battle store points to get a hat. So like, it's gonna okay. take you a while, but like, you can grind, and even the person just grinding it gives to them Legend. A sense of purpose. Yeah, even the person just grinding to yeah. Legend every month, maybe the, it'll take them two years to get a hat, but they'll get a hat out of it. Yeah, and it gives just you a reason to grind. They still love the game after, after I know. two years. But like, my point is, but, yeah. that, that gives everyone at a fairly wide spectrum reward. I mean, because right? that's kind of because I mean, to a, to a, a minor degree, that's that's pretty much what they tried with ranked. Re- I mean, right, but the ranked reward, it's oh, like the system is overly simplistic, but also like the difference between rank five and legend is one gold in common. Like it's like there's virtually no like motivation. Like, I mean, you're not going to be making legend just for that extra gold in common. You're going to make, you're going to be making legend for, you know, because you want to make legend, right? So like what, I'm, what, you, what I think like Dib is saying is you need to increase some sort of system where like there's that it's just that much more tempting, right? It's like, oh, okay, now I'll grant to legend, or oh, I'll grant to top five hundred legend because I, you know, I can get whether it's these points or whatever it is that I can mm. actually turn into something real. I mean, right now, I mean, I'm on, I've been in that boat for a while, where it's like, sure, I should be making legend or high legend or whatever, but then I get, I'm like, cool, I've made rank five, okay, now I'm either just not going to play that much or go play you know, what's the point. Or we'll go play artifact, or we'll go play other games, or whatever it is. Yeah, and I, I mean, I think it, I think it's important once again that it isn't just giving dust, dust or cards. Like competitive players don't need dust or cards. Like, got him. Like we we spend like two hundred freaking dollars <laughs> an expansion to buy cards, so we don't have to wait to like grind our cards. Like yes, there are will. Yes, I know the majority of players are, are free to play. The majority of players get that, but the majority of players are not reaching top two hundred legends, so it's irrelevant for them. So, so yeah, I, yeah, I think like a like like you said, like a loyalty currency would be probably the 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 best solution. But the problem is then obviously a lot of people would also then go, oh, pay to win, pay to win. You know, it's you know it's just Blizzard being greedy. So, but if it's pay to win and you pay and then you get physical things, that's not even that bad. Like I don't like it's you sure. can also just buy the thing on the store. Like they're literally just offering you something for if you do well at the game too. Like. I, yeah. I I don't think no, there would be much backlash. I just think that that Blizzard would look at that and go, "Lol, that's a lot of money it's going to cost us, and we don't think it's going to be a good return on investment." No, thank you. That's how I think they would yeah. look at that proposal. Yeah. Anyway, um, also just before we move on to the next yep. stage, also public apology to all Americans. I don't mean you jump to conclusions. <laughs> I'm just saying that sometimes <laughs> we look. I did not mean that at all. I'm not going to dig myself. Would you say that you jump to that. conclusions about all Americans? That would be probably true. <laughs> uh, but I, I just meant that in the sense that, like, I, a lot of the tweets that I saw about people being worried about the survey thing was coming from NA Hearthstone players. That's all. I, I think that's just also a symptom of social media, right? If you want oh, yeah. if you want your tweet to get retweeted, to be popular, you have to hit, like, e- emotive buttons in people. So you want to say the big scary things. You want to be, like... Like it's Clickbait. cynically yellow journalism. Yeah, cynically that's how it is. So that's another reason yeah. people overreact on social media because overreactions and reactions are what drive clicks, and that's how you become an yeah. influencer and make lots of money by being an influencer instead of having a positive impact like Bemi. Um, so let, let's move on. Uh, <laughs> um, the the one good uh, like happy piece of news we have to finish. Off finish off on or maybe happy depending on how you look at it uh is the act winter playoffs uh have been happening Uh, we've already got our top four players from china i'm not going to butcher the names uh and we didn't get to see any of it so i don't really care uh but we had the european uh winter playoffs this uh, last weekend Oh, but the um, Chinese players' names are not even that difficult. Come on. Okay, you, you, you can Lion say them. Lion King then. is so Go. hard. Lion King is not hard. Not hard. Okay. No. Go. It's Ling Yuan Jing, I think, and it's Yu Ying and Ka Ka Miao. 
Okay, see, but it's fine if you butcher them. It's not fine if I butcher them. So that, that's that's fine. So, grats to them in their stupid, uh, weird uh, Chinese I, system that they have. I literally don't know how it works. I, I, that's the other reason I, I don't want to talk about it. I love how Dale was like, it's not that hard. And then he like says the name of one of the people and he goes, I think. <laughs> Ling, Ling Luan Ying. That's quite a mouthful, I must say. But you know, I'm going to say, I'm going to give it to you. That was the name. I, oh, that was the whole reason I didn't want to put that guy's name. <laughs> I just wanted to state that. Like, I wasn't, um, I didn't want to not pronounce it because of Lion King. Well, I, I'm going to give Dale points for, for trying because that was oh. very well done. Sure, sure. Thanks. Uh, um, yeah, Lion King's just the only significant name there because wasn't he the? Well, he was the just just to make this a note, he was the last one standing, I believe, back in fall playoffs. That was the last hope for trying to actually make it. So this is the last. These are the last four people to try to have China well, in the world final. Ch- China's guaranteed one spot because of um, last call. Right. Everyone's yeah, guaranteed. That's one very spot. true. But to, get, but I'm, 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 to get more than I suppose that. Tom's yeah, more than Chinese. one chance. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, yeah. Oops, my bad. God, you got to you you racist. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized after I was like, oopsie. Technically, technically, in the Blizzard pronunciations of country, he is Chinese Taipei. Yeah, that's, that's uh, a that's, yeah, that's a hot political point. We're not going to dive into that. We're not. We're not times. Sorry. Yeah, let's not go there, please. Um, All right, okay, sorry, so was, yeah. the four players that qualified right, from um, uh, Europe were Faley. Uh, a player that a lot of players might not necessarily know, but like if you've been involved in the competitive scene, he's definitely a player that's been around, involved, performing really well for a very long time. So it's really good to see him making it, um, you know, further than he's ever made it before. Um, and from his group as well, Bunny Hopper also qualified. He's already qualified for Worlds, but uh, now making it through to his second um, championships of the the year, which is just a really amazing achievement especially considering he kind of took a break i think halfway through the year after certainly after he qualified the first time uh for worlds uh unfortunately the the kind of um um person to lose out on this group that i was really rooting for was casey uh losing mm. out to Faley in his decider match day and then losing out to bunny hopper who was his one of his practice partners as well which makes it extra rough i mean bunny hopper kind of he seemed pretty downbeat after winning because he'd had to knock out Casey, you know, but he said, like, he's not going to not play his best. Um, you know, obviously, Bunny Hopper, very, like, especially when you have a sponsor. Player. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true as well. Sponsored by Samsung. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think, I think it's more just a case of, you know, I, th- I think it's morals before yeah. sponsors for, for somebody like um, right. Bunny Hopper, anyway. I'm not saying that. I'm just like, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's even just, more it's so strictly business strictly business yeah and there's obviously the money to play for at the actual championships more yeah. points to qualify for uh higher up the the system um for next year etc etc so there's, there's lots of motivation beyond um just qualifying for worlds like he has already uh and then uh in the other uh, group from the top eight um viper qualified uh alongside thunder up uh, the kind of Thunder Up being the more unknown player that um, Bemi mentioned earlier from Turkey. Uh, and Viper, obviously, another player that's already qualified for Worlds, another German player uh, alongside Bunny Hopper, although Bunny Hopper is not quite German, but plays under a German flag because he studied in Germany. I think that... Or is he from Germany? No, he's from Germany, yeah. But he studied in Norway for a while. That's the story. I always forget which way around it is. Um, yeah, he was studying in Oslo. So I think lo- previously he's played under... A Norwegian flag, but is German. Anyway, so uh, Viper, another um, German player, another one that's qualified before. So Europe uh, is going to not get another four players qualifying through to Worlds, which I'm I'm sad about because two of them are already qualified. So we're hoping that uh, Thunder Up and um, Faley can make it through to Worlds to to keep the European contingent strong at Worlds. Um, or well, at least I am. I'm a Bemi. Bemi might maybe not so much. He's probably rooting for those <laughs> North American players. What, what are you talking about? Uh, I'm just talking in the eternal EU versus NA versus oh. China versus SEA. No, but... I don't. I I I'm I. Do I have a person I'm rooting for? I'm... No, no. I just mean like uh, when it comes to the the championships. Um, it's the yeah. interesting scenario of like if Bunny Hopper and Viper make top four, then they've already qualified for Worlds. So then the slots will go to other people that come, what, fifth and sixth if both of them are in the top four. 
So uh, that means that like at most we we can only have two European players qualifying from those championships instead of like the, the theoretical maximum of four if it's four <laughs> players that haven't qualified before. Right. So, you know, Europe's mm. going to go light on the other the other regions, I'm saying, give them a chance to qualify some of their players. Oh, we have so many players in NA already. I think it's fine <laughs> if there's more ears to show. We like what was like three, like this past fall was like three fourths of it was uh, American. Yeah, I think American. Followed by Blood too. Trail, the yeah. only one that like qualified for world that wasn't American. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so, I mean, you know, grats to those players. Uh, it was good to see. Like it was good to watch some more competitive Hearthstone. Honestly, I hadn't watched any in in a while, uh, so watching the top eight stuff on Sunday was pretty good. Um, and uh, this weekend we're gonna have the um, Americas playoffs coming up. Um, do you have any favorites? Do you have anyone you're rooting for there, Bami? Um, yeah, I do. I have one, and uh, this is me absolutely being biased, but uh, my esports organization has one in the playoffs right now uh, called Storm Fever, which I'm rooting for. Uh, but I'm also rooting for that's not in my uh, esports organization, uh, Sia Hoon 628, because uh, he's, he's a good buddy, and he was very, very close to qualifying. I don't know if Pelletire's in that winter playoff, but if he is, I'm also rooting for him as well. Uh, but that's that's roughly my three players as well. Um, but yeah, th- those are the people I'm reading for. I don't know if you guys are reading for anybody. By the way, sorry, I was just checking my phone to see if Thunder Up had a Twitter to see if we could learn more about him, but apparently he just made a Twitter just a couple days ago. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's a good time to make one. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I don't really have anyone particular that I'm reading for. I mean, there's lots of players in NA that like I'm uh, a fan of, you could say, but... Uh, most of them are pretty much, you know, well-known players like Mazi and, and that. So I, I, I don't know. Like, Tempo I'm just, storm. yeah, I'm just, well, I'm just hoping a lot of the, I'm just hoping for a good field for, um, the championships, right? That's, that's, you know, I want right. to see the, the, um, strong players make it through to the championships. That's the, the thing that's important to me because I don't have any, uh, vested interests in any of the, the players in particular. Um, that's fair. Yeah. But I mean, there's obviously like I have if, if I had teammates playing it, I would also uh, or, you know, people playing for my org or whatever. I would also definitely be supporting them. There's no uh, I don't think it's yeah. biased. I think it's just fair. <laughs> well, yeah, it, it, well, it is technically biased because you are part of the same group and you. Yeah, yeah. Who, but I mean, yeah, it, yeah. but, you know, yeah, yeah, it's fair. It's justified by it. Yes, it would be biased if like you were anything more than a spectator in the event. Right. That's but, you true. Know, you're just yeah. a spectator. So just, it's Tend just like supporting them. someone. <laughs> that's right <laughs> you never know uh and friends Panamanian? in high places <laughs> do you have anyone <laughs> no like the american scene i mean i know like a lot of big names there's no one like i'm following particularly like you said i, I just enjoy the watching like the sake of you know good good quality compared to hearthstone like there's no there's not like one particular player that i would say i want to win it or you know don't want to win it in any way yeah so yeah, I'm just you know for the love of the game. Ah, uh, how oh, how nice and cliche. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, no. friendship. <laughs> Everybody's the winner. Yeah, I would and, I would uh, love to see a Brazilian or Argentinian player qualify. That that is another thing as well because okay. I think the South American scene doesn't get a lot of rep, and I think they're super awesome. They did quite well in the fall championships, didn't they? Like, didn't yeah. we get two qualifying for worlds even? Uh, I'm mistaken. no, I, I don't. Uh, I don't, I don't even remember think... that far back. That was that was last year. I don't remember last year. What happened? <laughs> Stuff. <laughs> even though this is still 2018 HTT because things are confusing and Worlds only happens in 2019, even though it's 2018 Worlds. Yeah, but yeah. That, that confuses the crap out of me. I, I think Man, it's I wonder a, what 2019 is going to be like. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully good. Although, you know, based on all yeah. the uncertainty so far, we don't know. Uh, but before we get back into those depressing topics i think we're going to end on the the happy topic of let's hope for some good hearthstone and uh some nice cliches from pandemonia uh so (laughs) thanks a lot for joining us for this episode bemi um we've got your twitter up there uh at bemi esports um but is there anything else you want to it's below you is there anything else oh there it is i was like looking up i was like i don't see it Uh, there it is yeah um and you can also find myself 
Twitter at Durb underscore gaming and Panamonia at Panamonia ZA. But is there anything else you want to um, plug whilst you're here, Bermi? Any other shout outs you want to give? Uh, shout out to you guys and everybody at WESG. That was a wonderful community of casters that really helped me get up to where I am now. And hopefully I can, uh, we could all work together and have fun with it. And also shout out to uh, a quick social media shout out to at ATK mode which is my esports organization, all our, all the cool players that believe and think it's going to be good. And uh, just first of all, thank you to you guys for letting me come on and uh, making myself uh, look like a fool, but have fun talking about it. <laughs> uh, I mean, it was really great to have you. I think there's a lot of really interesting insight for, for people from uh, everything from the tournament organizing perspective to the production uh, perspective that like you can give that isn't uh isn't what we usually have on here with panamona and i just talking about serious things and uh and playing like from well mostly from a playing or casting perspective so yeah thanks a lot for for coming along you, you know what always confuses me about your org's name on one point is we we recently had like a what you would call like a internet cafe or like a pc barn uh open i know in exactly Town. the one you're talking about yeah called like attack arena or something like that i don't know what it's called but every time i see yeah. it, like you every time i see you tweet about uh your org i always like think about that place for a second uh, they <laughs> yes. always cross wires in my head because they both kind of came around about about the same time so yeah. the only thing i was thinking about was like oh i used to play Yu Gi Oh. what's a cool aggressive name with also ccg in it attack uh, okay that makes sense yeah and if you look at the Yu Gi Oh card it says atk so I was yes, like, yes, okay. yes i get that <laughs> Versus like power, which is what it's usually phrased as. It's also attack and hostile, right? That's yeah, what we call so. it attack and health. Is that what we call it? Yeah, attack and. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I'm so used to like... calling it power and toughness from Magic, so <laughs> I probably still. Call really? It that yeah, that's that's what it's called in Magic: power and toughness. And it's also like it changes between creatures and minions. Yeah, yeah. That's and that's monsters. another one. Anyway, uh, we're getting derailed again. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us again for this uh, episode 69. Lol, uh, 12, by the way. Um, it's been quite a long one, but I think there's a lot of really interesting um, input that we've we've been able to discuss a lot of really interesting uh, topics and have a lot of really interesting input from Bemi in particular. So uh, thanks a lot, everyone. Um, make sure you like, subscribe, do all those things, blah, blah, blah. You know the story. Um, uh, cheerio, everyone. Cheers.